I'm Super JJ. I play for Complexity Gaming and I'm from Germany. It feels very good to be through to the last day. Going into tomorrow, I just want to play solid, um, want to play slower and l really looking forward to compete uh, at my highest level. I'm always trying to push myself a bit higher. You're feeling like really alive. It's really crazy. I love that feeling. I think some people can break on it, but I, I think if you accept it and go with the flow, I think it can be really amazing. I will do my best um, and then we will see how it goes. My name's Fire, I'm from Blackburn. It feels really good to get into the top eight. Uh, I've been out of the game for about three months, but I feel like I've come back pretty strong. My last game was uh, very close and uh, I got in mainly due to uh, RNG effects. The level competition here is really strong. You know, you've got the both world champions and the world's best really. I'm coming into tomorrow with um, not really any particular expectations. I'm just going to try and do as well as I can and see what happens. You just have to play the game and uh, hope that it goes well. All right, that was Fire and JJ. They seem to be prepared for the match. They are actually sitting on this stage already, picking their bands, I hope. So we'll get some information. Well, we actually know both lines, yeah, yeah. right? So, Like, the bands are going to be easy. Like, JJ will ban the warrior and Fire is going to ban the shaman. Oh, look at that. Oh. Two warriors ban. He bans the patron warrior. I think that's like kind of a mistake. Okay, I I'm gonna say it. We practiced the patron versus freeze mage and the patron versus paladin, mm -hmm. and those are like heavy skill matchups. Like if you play freeze mage on the level of like uh, crane or laughing, you're gonna beat patron almost every time. Okay. If you play freeze mage on the level of fire, I think it's super hard to beat patron. Did you have uh, that match yesterday with him? Yeah, I destroyed him. But uh, that matchup. If the freeze mage plays perfectly, it's almost unwinnable for the warrior. So, well, it's unwinnable. Okay, but both warriors are banned, so it's not not the case here. And uh, fire has his mage open. He actually opened the mage against you. Um, let's see if he will if he will do it again. Uh, if I would have to take a bet, I would say that JJ will open with the druid because it's such a universal deck. What do you think, Lorenda? Yeah, I mean, the Druid seems to be the, the class that we were talking about earlier. You've got to find a way to get a win with, because it's mm -hmm. possibly the weakest. Not so much in this lineup, but, you know, in general. And it can just sweep through if you get enough stuff. But, you know, JJ will have better preparation than just a few seconds of which one will sweep through. What do you think, Badu? What, what do you think he'll open with? I mean, we can already see, like, the game started. So okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So it's mirror between the Druids. I'll take you... Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'll leave you guys to it. Uh, and have fun. Yep. Yeah. Well, we give the people what they want. We have RDU here casting the Insomnia quarterfinals. Yeah, the, the Druid Mirror is like a very interesting matchup. I really like it. Like, uh, the games that get decided by Yogg are kind of like uh, weird. But if you leave Yogg aside, it's like so many decisions about like the way you want to ramp up and like the way you want to like put the threats on the board. It, it's very difficult matchup, I think. So every single step you're deciding whether you want more mana, whether you want more stuff on the board, whether you want to draw more cards, and how that's going to yeah. pan out for the next, how many turns, for all of the turns, really. Yeah, even like the use of Nourish is like, when do you use Nourish, when do you like prefer to like play the minions, what's the chance, like calculating all these things adds like some depth. We see both players starting with Walgro, so it's going to be like a, a pretty standard start, but uh, it can get crazy afterwards. Okay, so we see the um, the Innovate going into the hand of Fire there. Obviously, that's a big start for Fire. Um, how early are you looking to use the Innovate? Are you looking to just establish the board straight away, turn two Innovate, or would you get the Wild Growth used first? It depends. You don't really want to play the Fandral uh, on turn two if you don't have any good follow-up for it. For example, you would play Fandral on turn two maybe if you had like Power of the Wild Living Roots in your hand to just uh, go all-in early game. But in this situation, I think you go Wild Growth, and I'm not even sure if you want to play Fandral on turn 4. It depends on if you draw Nourish or if you draw some other combo cards first. Right, and JJ's got one of those hands you were talking about where you know, you've got the Arcane Giant, you want to start reducing that cost, but you don't want to blow your Living Roots that might just die like to the side effects of a swipe, even if you can't buff it. But also you can get the board with the Living Roots early and start... Yeah, I, I, I like Living Roots turn 1 here, because uh, if your opponent plays the Hero Power, then he doesn't play Wild Growth, so that's already good. Right. If he plays Wild Growth, he deals some more damage and you maximize the value out of the Living Roots. And then you go turn to Wild Growth and turn to uh, turn 3 Teacher, and you have like a pretty good game plan as JJ. As Fire, he has to go Wild Growth on 2 and then uh, see what happens from yeah, there. Yeah, he'll have had two more draws by turn 3, so he'll be able to 
see what he wants to do with that Innovate a lot quicker. And JJ just making sure he takes his time here to evaluate all these options. As you've already said, they're very complicated decisions. And he is going to go with that Living Roots. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's going on the life course strategy of mapping the game in the early turns. He, like, sees how he wants the game to go. Right, because 70 seconds is not very long. You're going to need more than 70 seconds on turn three, turn four. Yeah, yeah. So, so you might as like, well do that now. Yeah, yeah, but the downside of that is that you give your opponent some more time too. Right, and um, something that was actually Fire was taking some advice yesterday against you from um, Terence, who he was on a team with very briefly. And yeah, the advice they gave him was just slow down, take it in, you know, don't make quick decisions. So, you know, Super JJ taking time here is also letting Fire settle down into the match. Yeah, yeah. Like now, Fire has the option to like go find all Innervate Wrath if JJ like plays a minion, but uh, yeah, JJ is not gonna play a minion now. Still, a Fandral Innervate Wrath might be like pretty big later on in the game. Yep, going to take control of the board at least in the short term. Obviously, JJ will have this Violet Teacher of his own, and again, you're always. It's always hard to plan all of the Druid turns ahead because you need to see exactly what you pick up. You're going to pick up good things every single turn, but which good things and how you're going to plan them. It depends exactly what you get. That mulch will be really big later in this game as well, most likely. I mean, it depends. Like, um, mulch is really good when the board state is even. If you're like way too behind, it's not really that good. And if you're ahead, it's pretty good too. Right. But uh, in this spot, I think as far you might just want to cycle the rough to like try to find some better cards that you can use with Fandral. Yeah, you don't get much out of it at this point, just rathing with Fandral, and um, there's no hurry to occupy the board when you've got a handful of removal like this. Yeah, yeah. Much as you would like the board, it's like <laughs> you're not in a hurry to do it, and people who hurry in these situations often end up just... We saw um, Vinge do it against Ekop. Ekop just sat there and reacted to everything that he did, and they had very similar hands, and Ekop ran out on top just because he was the slower. He took it more carefully. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised that Vinge didn't opt to like play the Giants super early in that game, but... Mm -hmm. This, now we have another series on our hands. I didn't get to cast that one. Um, as JJ, playing teacher like this might be okay, because if your opponent uses the removal to kill your teacher, then you still have the nourish as a follow-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fire keeping the rough was like an interesting decision. He did not want to opt for cycling, so that means that he wants to use it with Fandral. But wh what are you going to use it with Fandral on? You're going to use it with Fandral to kill an Azri Drake, presumably. But um, that's <laughs> right, a bit yeah. far-fetched. Yeah, I mean, it's just three extra damage that you can do at some point in the game, though. Like, maybe he just decided he wants to be greedy. His hand is a little bit prone to emptying itself. Uh, like, you're, if you cycle it like you were going to, you try and draw into a nourish and actually get your hand filled back up. But maybe he's just going with a decision that he wants to just keep what he has because it's okay for now. Talnos. Not that great. Like, you have no way to kill the teacher at the moment. Next not thing not, can a, go not for a good like, way, anyway. Yeah, yeah next thing you can go for like the Fanral, Talnos, Innervate, Raf and kill the teacher. But then the teacher might just grow too much. But if she grows, you still have the Talnos swipe. Maybe swipe Innervate, Raf with the Talnos. Yeah, he'll be thinking about how he's going to use this next turn, I think, here. Um, but, like, you're always scared of that Power of the Wild or similar buffs here. He's just going to deal with things now. Wow. That's super expensive. I, I'm not sure about this. Because, like, if you leave it one more turn, you take four more damage, but then you have, like, a way better clear, and you set up for, like, a better turn for yourself. Yep. And then you just give all the tempo back to your opponent. Hmm. Yeah, and you can see that in the hand sizes now as well. I mean, I know JJ has, you know, had a slightly better opening, but using all those cards to clear that when he could just do it next turn seems... Seems yeah. like wasteful. F Fire went all in on keeping the Wrath. Like, he would have right. a totally different game if he would opt to cycle the Wrath on turn four. If you do that, like, he would maybe play Tempo Talnos and then, like, just uh, go for Fandral on turn, like, eight or nine, like, try to find some other ways of winning the game. But as it stands, now he's with three cards in hand and he relies on JG playing Azure Drake now. If JG plays Azure Drake now, yeah, he'll be in a really good spot. But if JG plays Nourish, this doesn't look too good for him. Right, and JJ playing the long game, no surprise, they're actually just drawing the cards and like nothing's going to happen to him in the next three or four turns, so just fill your hand up and, and outvalue your opponent seems really good in this position. Yeah, Talos is not really like a big threat, is it? And then Fire with the Maya Keeper decision, obviously normally you want to ramp with this card, but he's already on six mana and his hand's kind of cheap. He may decide to put minions on the board. Yeah, now, now you want to put the minions on the board, but is it that strong? It's like just super easy to clear again. 
especially when your opponent has like, eight or nine cards in their hand because they've nourished and you know you've let them take their time. Yeah, that, that's like the downside of like keeping the Wrath there. Just coming back at him. Because like if you have nothing to Wrath, then he's just going to stand in your hand and your opponent just gets a massive hand and then yeah, out temples you. And everything we're seeing would have been in his hand one turn earlier, so you're yeah, yeah. building up this Mire Keeper last turn and so on. So it's snowballing from that decision, which was, you know, it's, it's a fair decision to, to make, you know, you decide you're going to go for the value with the Fandral, but if you're going to make that decision, you have to do it fairly soon. Otherwise, like you say, it's just sitting in his hand doing nothing and slowing him down. Yeah, that's what I said, like, Druid Mirror is, like, so interesting now because you don't have the Savage or Force of Nature combo. So, like, uh, there's, like, tons of different uh, approaches you can have to the mirror and, like, every single hand can give, like, uh, multiple int intrications. Yeah, I mean, I think it's getting lost a little bit because of the Yogg things that are happening. But, yeah, Druid Mirrors are so complicated. And, like, not only do you have multiple cards interacting, but each card has got decisions. Like, there's so many choose cards yeah, yeah. that make you... Like, every single card, do you want to make more minions? Do you want to make... More mana, do you want to do this, do you want to do that? Yeah, the, the thing with Yogg is like he just negates all almost it. all the decisions yeah. that were made. Like the players like try their best, like uh, put themselves in the best spot and then Yogg just, uh, it's like, no, no, I don't like that. Right, and we saw, um, I go back to the previous series again because Ekop negated it quite well by keeping his own Yogg in his hand, but also putting a board yeah, yeah. that had to be cleared in two different ways. But in this particular game, with neither player having Yogg, uh, JJ's sort of better knowledge of the matchup seems to be standing him in good stead right now because they've had similar starting hands. Yeah, yeah. Like now, JJ has the mulch to remove the first threat and has Raven Idol, Coin, and maybe he'll pick up some other spells and he'll just like try to reduce the Giants and then play two Giants. His opponent is going to mulch one and then he plays the Ancient of Four and it's game over. Yeah. Unless, unless fancy Yogg happens. Yeah, JJ is just going to want to work out here which turn he wants to play double giant on, possibly, or does he want to just play one at a time? But I assume he'll set up to play both on the same turn in probably two turns from now. Yeah, it, it depends on how many spells he decides to play. Like now, he he can like go for Mario Keeper Fair Rage, or he can go for like Isaac Drake Coin Fair Rage. Both plays have uh, their yeah. reasons and uh, their benefits. And getting two eight eights down on turn eight, which is two turns before Yogg, is much different from getting down on turn nine. Yeah, yeah. Where Yogg may deal with them both. I mean, it's very hard for Yogg to deal with uh, a damage. Sure, but you, you don't want to give that chance if you're that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. yeah, and he's choosing to, like you say, just play as many spells as possible now and next turn. Yeah, he still keeps the coin now. He doesn't want to like use it yet. Next time he's going to explode on his opponent, I think. There's three spells he can cast. But Raven Idol can give an extra spell. So Fire has got the chance here to... Fandral into either Wrath, Power of the Wild, Living Roots, two from three of those this turn, so he's going to get a lot of value, um, but he's going to need to get a lot of value because next turn he's facing down so much that he doesn't yet know about, of course. He would need an Innervate in this situation. An Innervate would like, allow him to like put a decently sized board. Oh, another Wrath. Yeah, I think you're Wrath here. I, I like keeping the Living Roots for Teacher just in case Fandral dies. Right. Yeah, next turn could be a spectacular turn. Oh, wow. I mean, Nourish loses some value. It's still like three mana draw three cards, which is like insane, like way better than Arcane Intellect, for example. But uh, it's more insane on turn five when it also like ramps you up. That's when it's absolutely bonkers. JJ has like a clear with Azure Great Coin swipe, and then that will make his uh, spell count to eight, making right. uh, Arcane Giants four. That's pretty cheap. And he'll be able to play one of those this turn if he wants to. Um, depends how he chooses to deal with this Fandral, if at all. You can't really let Fandral live. We've seen it too many times. People have gambled and letting Fandral live, and it doesn't end well very often. I mean, it depends. Fandral can also like do limited things. He can like get you value for Nourish or get you bored for like Power of the Wild mm -hmm. slash Living Roots or kill your, or kill your board for Wrath. That's what Fandral can do. If you have a counter to like what Fandral can do, then you just can leave it up. But uh, yeah. we don't see Yogg-Saron yet in JJ's hand, so... That's why he opts to kill the fun right now. Yeah, so his next turn, he'll like he's just delayed the explosion one turn to deal with the short-term problem. And now Fire's got to decide about what he wants to be this Violet Teacher. Violet Teacher into Nourish, into Power of the Wild will be a hand his card he's obviously looking at doing, but... I, I think in Nourish swipe, swipe, he's like super safe. Just Nourish swipe and then you expect your opponent to play a big minion next turn. He plays the big minion and then you go like Violet Teacher, Mulch, but... 
leaving with Spar of the Wild. Yeah, you have enough mana. And does Fire know you're playing card for card the same lists before this cast? So uh, will he know about the double, you know, the arcades? They're not going to be surprise cards, but will yeah, he know no, exactly? Did you show it on the stream that he had like double mode? Right. With, uh, so. Double arcane giants. Because obviously at this stage of a tournament, knowledge becomes important as well of your opponent's decks. And Fire is setting up a huge teacher here. I don't know, like I would have preferred a Nourish and making the huge teacher next turn because mm -hmm. now if your opponent manages to kill your teacher, you're like so far behind. And like, if he kills your teacher and plays a minion, then you have to Nourish next turn and you go so much behind. Okay, so JJ sure. taking the Moonfire to deal with one minion, but also for zero mana to reduce the cost of these giants by two. So it's like an innovate <laughs> that kills a guy. It's pretty good. He's not even going to mulch. Like, teacher is not really a big threat, is he? Is it? Not just part of the wild. I mean, he could mulch it, but he doesn't need to. Yeah, his patience is being rewarded here. He hasn't hurried these giants now. He's just put them down on a turn where it's like, like you said earlier, even Yogg would probably struggle to clear this most of the time. I mean, he can get Doom out of Yogg, and then that's like the ultimate high roll. Sure. That would be like straight up robbery. We should like call the police to like get him and arrest him. And yeah, Fire's now going to have to mulch one of these 9-9s. Nine and mulch is really good. You, you usually give your opponent something not very good. But again, you, you can have an accident with it and just give them a Ragnaros or something. Or a Molt Lurker. Or a Molt Lurker. No bitterness in that voice at all. I, I think you should start with like the Nourish here, by the way. Right. Unless you want to play Double Power of the Wild, which is a bit weird. Because like, if you play Double Power of the Wild, yeah, you, you get a bore, but you're probably going to lose it next turn. Well, if you play the Nourish, you can hit Yogg-Saron and then, like, uh, win the board next turn. Is Power really that good? Hmm. He has managed to build a pretty big board out of that turn, though. It's going to be fairly hard to deal with. You definitely don't trade with the teacher. You, you do not trade with the teacher, no. That, that has to be incorrect, because your opponent has to kill the teacher. Like, your opponent is going to kill the teacher. You just did a trade for him here. Right. Like, this is... Ah, okay, never mind. But it was not good. Like, you should never do the trades for your opponent. Yeah, he's got to do them anyway, you're saying. Would you be scared of something like, like he hasn't seen what card... Oh, he has seen what card came from the um, Raven Idol, so yeah, he wouldn't have to be scared of Savage or anything like that, killing him. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Fire should have realized that his only way of winning was Yogg-Saron, so he had to, like, Nourish last turn. Right. But now Nourish can be too late. We'll see. He may have felt that he was just in front there. I mean, the board looked pretty dominating, and, you know... Two free freeze is not really that imposing. Sure. <laughs> Yep, Fire going through the Nourish into Raven Idol into Zero Giant. What are those? Hmm. Bite can clear the board, right, if I'm not wrong. Mark of the Wild will give you a 10 10 taunt. But yeah, Bite yeah, you want to tidying clear. everything up. Yeah, yeah. And just drops the Giant. Yeah, next turn plays a 5 10 taunt, which may be met by the Alchemist or the Mulch, so plenty of ways out still for JJ. And both these guys have taken a lot of damage just in tidying up boards with their face throughout this game. <laughs> uh, actually, Fire is in not such a bad spot right now. He's in an okay spot. JJ will probably go for like Fandral Innervate Mold to just put uh, as much pressure as possible on the board. Mm -hmm. And then that will work out nicely for him as it happens because he'll have this crazy Alchemist to deal with the, an the Ancient next turn. And let's fire up Roots, of course. The thing is that it's not really the best way to deal with it, because you have to tank 10 damage with your face. It's not something that you usually want to do. Hmm. Edge of War is pretty good when JG doesn't have a second mulch yet. That giant was like huge. Okay, yeah. this can help. So that now you go like crazy the alchemist and like part of the wild is gonna like help you deal with it absolutely yep. flawlessly. Yeah, nice looking board and obviously with the Fandle down as well. The game swings backwards and forwards so fast in these Druid <laughs> matches. Like every card off the top makes such a massive difference. Like a minute ago, Silverman Guardian like a half decent minion. Now it's doing nothing at all. Yeah, Yorkshire is like the best draw of the entire day. Strangely. And no, well, Innovate, not quite going to cut it, I don't think. Fire's facing lethal. One off, he's going to have to Ooh. do it. And, and again, the board has been swinged. Wow, just from he looks like he's dead to no, he doesn't to. Wow. Innovate does absolutely whiff here. 
Innervate has to be the worst draw for Druid when you draw it late game. Like, people say that Innervate is like an OP card because it's like so insane early game, right. but they never look at the downside of you top decking it uh, late game. It's kind of like also like one drops. That's why one drops are costed uh, a bit uh, more powerful because if you draw one drop on turn 10, then it's absolutely. Yeah, like I make my old 2 1. Great. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I play my abusive sergeant on my empty board. So. Yeah, yeah. And now again, back to the Silverman Guardian. It's actually going to be kind of annoying to clear with such a low life totals for each player. It's not the greatest minion ever, but. Uh, do you take the Fell Rage here or do you take the Wrath? You're on 10 health, you're kind of a little bit scared. Mm, I still like cycling the Wrath. Cool. Yeah, I like the decision here. Uh, both players want to find Yogg-Saron because, wow, the, the, double, the second new range is like insane for fire here. So he'll have Yogg-Saron probably in two turns time. There's hardly any cards left in this library. Yeah, JG can also have like only two more draws, I think. Okay, Ruff is a good cycle. So we'll see him cycle because he's got the, um, well, the cycle the and the innovate to play the Yogg if he does He needs the Yogg, yeah. Um... I'm not mulch sure if buys you a mulch. turn, right? I'm not sure if you mulch. Do you mulch? I think, it's, I think you, if you're all in on getting Yogg, that might buy you a turn because you don't want to take 9 next turn when you're on 14. Yeah, yeah. It, it, actually, yeah, because the Azure did side damage. Yeah, like 4 when you're on 14's a lot, so... Yeah, yeah. So is Kaldara Drake. Is it you can use your hero power more than once a turn? Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. can armor up twice. He's like Super Warrior Druid now. He can win next game because it's five da uh, next time, sorry, because it's five damage from the hero. Five damage and five armor. <laughs> the, the armor is irrelevant. Yeah, JJ sure. needs one draw here. Yeah. Yogurt boss. Okay, never mind. Uh, it's not really a bust. But the thing is that Fire can still get something from the Nourish and win the game from this spot. Yeah, he's got plenty of options here, so... But he has to find them, because again, you know, those swings can happen really quickly. They're both low on cards, so Yogg's coming sooner rather than later for one of them. Do you cycle the Wild Girl first, or do you cycle the Nourish first? Well, he's just showing town to make sure he hasn't got any sort of lethal, but he hasn't. Um... So he's chosen to cycle the cheaper cards, so he's more likely to be able to play all three cards in his hand. But what if you cycle Nourish and you get like the swipe? If you play the Wild Girl before, you would not be able to play the swipe. Right. I think I like Nourish a bit more than Wild Girl, but Wild Girl is also like okay to start it off with. So he's considering, because he's thinking so long, like hero powering four times here? Does not want to Nourish. And he's just going to face tank this and leave the teacher up. And then he's going to be Yogg next turn, probably, if he's in trouble. If he's not, he'll just obviously doesn't matter. Interesting approach. The fact that he gives you four armor lets him face tank this, I think. So, And, yeah, and, and he drew the Yogg, so the Nourish is less needed. Because he has, he'll be scared of the Yogg if he plays it, actually fatiguing him to death. Yeah, yeah. OK, now the thing is that if this matchup would have happened while Fire would ban the Shaman, and leave the warrior up. GG was like already in favor to win the series. Right. By starting with Druid. Because I, I argued with him last night, like uh, Druid is like the safest start overall, but if you lose the mirror match, if your opponent starts with Druid and you lose the mirror match, you're in a super bad spot. Right. But now because Fire decided to somehow, for some reason, leave the Shaman open, Shaman just on paper should crush his lineup. Like we know Shaman is favored against Druid. Yep. We know Shaman absolutely destroys Freeze Mage. Yep. And, uh, and it can beat Paladin. It, it's super favored against Paladin. So. Too. So, like, he's banned the whole tournament was Shaman, and now he decides that he wants to ban the Warrior just because it did okay versus him yesterday. So, if you're JJ here, do you try and get the Druid out of the way so your Shaman is favored massively in the other two games? Yeah, you, you try to, you like, try just set, set the ground for the yeah. Shaman to just destroy your try opponent. Try and get the, the slightly dodgy matchup out of the way without yeah, yeah. the Shaman and just destroy the other two. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he's gone with. So, he's going to take on the... The Zoo's pretty good position here as well, so... Although, double innovate... Raven Idol. I don't think you keep Raven Idol, Raven Idol if you already have Innervate, so you just right. push the Thanos Digital. We talked about this with Sotl earlier when um, Vinge kept Innervate Raven Idol in, in one of the games. Uh, I think it was correct to keep the Raven Idol, but I don't think it was correct to keep the Wrath. That's what he kept. Right. Yeah, Wrath, that, that Wrath keep uh, was like weird, to say the least. Uh, so Jay got a pretty good starting hand here, assuming that he'll draw into something. Uh, actually, it's not that good. Like. Uh, this one was only just crush the back of the Druid. They don't really do that much. 
So what are the key cards you're looking for here early? Are you looking for your three twos and... You just want Flame Imp on one. If not Flame Imp, any other one up is okay, but it's not Flame Imp. And then two drop, any two drop or one plus one is okay. But then if you have Castleman on three, the game changes drastically. So Castleman on three is like the best thing you can have against right. Trade because they have such a hard time dealing with it. And then he also has the Argus follow-up, which is like also like massive. Yeah, but um, on the other hand, the Druid player has double innervate, so he's one inch of war away from like uh, setting up uh, the Great Wall of China. And he has Swipe as well, so that can deal with a lot of the stuff I've needed as well. Um, but he is going to rely on drawing into good stuff in a moment, because at the moment he's going to have no cards in hand going into about turn six. This kind of telegraphs the Swipe. Not sure. Like, there was like a reason to like just rough the Voidwalker for free. And then if your opponent plays Constant Man, which is like the best thing he can have, you can like swipe, innervate right. hero power and just deal with it. But this like telegraph swipe is like, hey JJ, yes JJ, I have swipe in my hand. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the differences between like the pro players and, and the strong amateur players is is setting up those reads for your opponent. The pro yeah, the, the amateur players can make the read but they won't set it up so much. Yeah, yeah the amateur, some of the non-pro players don't have like such a good macro game. Like we saw yesterday when Fire played against me, that he, if he had two mana left and hero power is a party, he would always use it. Well, usually it's not good to use it versus Warrior, for example, because Warriors can have Acolyte of Pain and drastically punish you. Right. That's like m the macro game. And uh, it is a very big skill to just not use your resources sometimes. Yeah, doing nothing is one of the hardest turns yeah. in Hearthstone <laughs> for, for most players. You feel like, I don't want to lose my four mana or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, what but doing? in the long run, you might earn more. So that's yes. the thing. I really like the positioning here. Like playing the constant near the square guarantees uh, that uh, you get both big value targets from the Argus. But fire is one mulch away from winning the game. If you mulch the constant, then you give yourself so much more time. Yeah, and he has that removal. Now, that Force of Nature is also okay against Zoo. It helps you fight for that board a little bit. It's not a brilliant card, but... If you do get it cleared up, it'll at least help you fight against Zeus Reload. Yeah, I would have liked Fire to play Talnos Innervate Swipe here because you set up a board. Yeah, it's bad versus Argus, but if he has Argus and you don't do anything now, you just instantly lose the game. So, like, you're bad to Argus anyways. And if you realize that, you go swipe Talnos Innervate the Swipe, then you have, like, Follow Up Force of Nature, Innervate Power of the Wild. That's absolutely bonkers. And we saw it in the previous game where he was a little bit greedy with the Wrath, just playing a little bit too value orientated, maybe, to, yeah, yeah. to deal with these balls. I, I don't like the way JJ Argus, like, he just gave his opponent the chance to kill his councilman. So, like, Fire's misplay led to JJ to misplay. Right, because JJ got the wrong read from the, from the play. I, I, I don't know if he no got the right there, ring. maybe. I don't think there's any circumstance where you should Argus that to Minions. I really don't like that from JJ. It, it was weird to say the least. Now he can just lose the game because of that. Straight up. Like, what, what? he set up it and then he just doesn't Argus that. Maybe he has the Argus bug again. Maybe JJ has like an Argus curse. Oh, because he had that yesterday where you had the old um, positioning. Yeah, it was a bug. Like, he said that he played it in the middle and that then just like it killed it to the to the right side. Right, they did got rid of that bug for a long time, but perhaps it's just been reintroduced with Wing 3. Yeah, minions like to dance because they want to join the party of Karazhan. Wow, that is so good. <laughs> you, you can come back anytime, Adam. <laughs> yeah, so JJ, doing what Zoo does though, I mean, if Fire's down to 10, JJ's going to be able to draw a whole bunch of cards and Fire's going to need to find like an Ancient of War or a Feral Rage fairly soon to deal with this stuff to either boost his own health back up, waiting for the Yogg, or to just stop this onslaught. Yeah, from this spot, I think it's super hard for Fire to lose this game. Like, you just mulch the Doomguard, get rid of his biggest minion. Yep. And then get some HP, and then Yogg Saran, and then chill. And we didn't see the options, though, I don't think, but he's taken the bite just to get that 4 HP as much as anything, I should think. He'll be able to kill something, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. And, like you say, Yogg Saran, unless it scores an own goal, should be pretty good right here on turn 10. Pyroblast phase. That, that, gonna happen one day. That'll be, like, justice, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Definition of justice, Yogg kills self. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, fires... Got the Instantly the played the of right. We didn't even see From it from the air. We hit the floor. The ancient of air. Yeah, this game looks over, and it's it all comes down to JJ's uh, mistake on turn four. Just misplacing the Argus there, costing the game, in my opinion. Yeah, lost a lot of board that a lot of it would have stayed around. So, 
uh, misreading or misplaying or whatever there. And, 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 and also, like, sorry to interrupt you, the thing is that if I would have went for like probably the correct line of play of going Talnos uh, innervate, the innervate the swipe, then JJ would not be able to misplay the Argus turn. Right, and do you find it hard sometimes to play against less experienced players because of that? Is that a thing that happens? No, no, no. No, you just, just beat them? Not, not really, like we saw yesterday. But uh, you just have to like, try to maximize your chances, and if your opponent makes a, a slight mistake, try to punish him for that. And I try my best to like, I try my best all the time to like punish mistakes, but it's not always possible. But usually it is. Here, for example, it was like he could yeah. punish the mistake super good, but he didn't. Yeah, um, for all the RNG effects in Hearthstone, people misunderstand how much the best players do win far more often than the not so good players. Like, yeah, like you, know, you see the same names in these top 16s time and time again. Yeah, if, if they're Swiss LHS, then like, yeah, we see like JJ crushing it in a... Every time, every single time he comes here. But people were saying, like Sotaro was saying that JJ is like really good in Swiss. And uh, yeah, that's... Ma ma mainly shows that... Uh, but you've only ever missed out once through Swiss yourself, right? Your dream yeah, packs yeah. and stuff, you've been just going through the Swiss... Uh, I missed out at Valencia and that's because I brought Freeze Mage. Bringing Freeze yeah. Mage in LHS is not really like the best call you can make. But Laughing convinced me. But all the other... Laughing's good at that. Laughing convinces everybody in time. Yeah, he can be like a good telemarketer. <laughs> For Freeze Mage. He can so. call people and just like sell things that they don't need. Sells Freeze Mage to people who are going to qualify anyway. <laughs> And Fires has got to be very careful here, down to that three health. So it's ruled Yog out of the equation. Not that it should matter, but he just has to be a little bit careful, yeah. Yeah, he also has the Feral Rage for next turn. He's like, he needs to die now, or else he's never going to die. And he need, JJ needs Doomguard into something. Doomguard into tap, into power overwhelming. Ooh. Close oh, <laughs> that's cruel, though. Just play the Doom Guard and then the Craze Alchemist. What could go wrong? Make it a 7 5. Yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong, guys? As Soto said yesterday with like, the taunt uh, thing that happened, you just like play the Craze Alchemist and then like uh, you play Doom Guard and then Doom Guard automatically gets reversed in yeah, that just spot. just hope for some sort of bug. Yeah, you just like enhance one of the board uh, spots. So Fire does finish that off as you predicted a few turns ago and he goes 2 0 up. And now, JJ, now it's the comeback time. He needs to win this first game, then he's got every chance. Yeah, now, even the first game is like massively favored. Now, again, as I said, if I would have banned Shaman, this series was like almost 90% 90, 90 or 80% over. But because he decides to leave the day that he banned all tournament open, now this can hurt him. Of course, JJ is not like insanely favored. Like, percentage wise, he's probably like 60 something against yeah. uh, the Druid. 70 against Paladin and like 90 or 80 against Freeze Mage. You're going to get messages from laughing. It doesn't matter, but like all these percentages overall. Freeze Mage versus Shaman. Yeah. It's 50 50. <laughs> we all know this now. No, no, but like real talk. <laughs> Even if you're like favored in three matchups in a row, it's still less than 50% overall if you look at uh, yeah. it before. Yeah. It soon adds up. If you're 70% twice, you're 50 50. Yeah. 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 You, have like, you have like 90 out of 70 out yeah. of 60. Yeah, that's like. I don't know, off the top of my head, like 25, 35 or 30. It's yeah. like 30, kind of like that, I think. So you're not a believer in the Freeze Mage being 50-50? No. You're not? It's not 50-50. I predict you will have messages from Laughing when you get back to Twitter after this cast. I mean, if Laughing plays this matchup, which he's not, then it would be like maybe still 35 for Freeze okay. Mage. But it's not Laughing playing this matchup. Like, for the viewers that don't know Laughing, Laughing is a guy that only plays Freeze Mage for like tens of thousands of games. Like only yeah, his Freeze Mage. overlay is actually just Freeze Mage orientated. He's, I think he doesn't have any other golden classes. He only has Freeze Mage golden. And not Tempo Mage, like he doesn't play that. He's like just Freeze Mage. He has nine decks of Freeze Mage made. Right, and he's he is a guy that's credited for changing yeah. Freeze Mage into a more burning, aggressive deck. Yeah. And we see this opening hand here and Fire's got a, the ramp that he needs, but not much else to go with it right now. But JJ also is going to have a pretty aggressive start. Yeah, like, Druid needs to ramp up, and if they manage... Wow. You don't play it right, though. Wow, what? I guess he's deciding that he wants to draw the card to go with the third innovate. I don't know, that's a bit... Mm. Ah. JJ I, I don't needs, know. I don't know. Like, just needs a lightning bolt or something now, though, and things are going to get messy now. For again, like I, I, we talked about macro game earlier. Like this shows that you have no macro game at all. Like you cannot. You just 
you just want to play cards if you can play them, and that's not always good. You should like think about the macro game and like how your next things are gonna be. Like, oh, you can play the Drake now, but then my next thing is gonna be absolute awful. It's not gonna like help with anything, right? Right. That that was just bad for JJ. And 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 you, yeah. you, 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 you saw that, right? He he even realized it. He, he, just rolls, cost himself a divine shield for no reason. Yeah. And that's just not playing. But he deserved turnout, it. Right? He deserved it. Yeah. Because he misplayed. And that can happen, right? You think you're going to play your Flame Tongue Totem, you realize after you lightning bolt, oh no, I'm rolling. And then you know what you've done, but now you've got to kind of carry on and, and wince that you've just given away, um, you've given away a minion. Yeah, we saw JJ shake his head there. So. Uh, also, like, wh why did Fire innovate the Nourish for mana and not for drawing cards when he has two cards in the hand? We, we, are, we are seeing some top quality Hearthstone right here from both players, guys. So, how are you enjoying being a caster, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Very pleasant experience. <laughs> and so, like, joking aside, I mean, it is early in the morning on a quarter final after three days of competition, so yeah. you know, sometimes mistakes do happen because of people playing. I mean, both these guys came through the Swiss. They have been playing three days solid Hearthstone, so things can go wrong on that stage. You so, just giant, right? You don't yeah. want to use the living roots just yet. Who do you fancy in this position? Like the druid started it's to get hard established, to say. and JJ's not done that. Druid needs engine of four, but not not playing the nourish to draw cards and get to the engine of four and just instantly win the game baffled me. Like now he needs to like just top deck it, or else he loses. While JJ can get hammer and win at any time. His opponent also has like some cards that also win him the matchup. It's very hard to say who is going to win. And that taunt's pretty useful there for JJ as well. It's just to stop that giant doing anything useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's going to have to now, like, living roots it, probably. Raven Idol, let's see what he gets. Swipe would be pretty nifty here. As you can hear, the excitement from other games around Insomnia probably right now as No, well. it's from Hearthstone. People are excited to watch uh, the Dread vs. Shaman matchup. They're cheering, they wait for the Yogg Saran to like make his appearance. Oh, you see the swipe. Oh, here. they're praising. That's what they're doing. It doesn't work. I did it yesterday, it didn't work for me. Like, I, I don't know. Just praise harder, man. You, that's all you can do is keep praising. Yeah. Uh, fire drawing, so he's going to clear up very nicely with this swipe here. And solving a lot of his problems drawing that, in fact. Is he going to like trade an 8 8 into like the 1 2 Trog? It looked like that's how it was pointed, but yeah. I don't know, like, usually it looks good, but Shaman is always going to be able to, like, make board again. And 8 damage is worth quite a lot. Yeah. It's almost a Pyroblast. It's like 10 mana, something like that. And Trog is like 1 mana. So, like, that Trog was pretty good. Well, and they're going to keep hitting you anyway as a Shaman, so at some point you've got to kill them. So yeah, yeah, like, one of, the, one, of, one of the best strategies is to raise them. You, you can raise them, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because you you've got more big things coming. You're not you're not going to draw small things for this again. That makes sense. Um, but find a good spot despite that as well. And 18 health, that should be enough to get through with this, to be honest. I don't know if GG's one doom him away from winning. So he's probably gonna have two draws at Doomhammer plus other draws to sort of get rid of things as well. Well, hoping his opponent doesn't get entered of war. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be close, and if Fire does get this, he will be through to that semi-final to take on Acop. Getting the Nourish, the second Nourish of the game. Again, like in the third series in a row. It's pretty good. The Wrath. Plays the other 8-8, and that's going to set up two-turn lethal. Oh, I think that's end, end of the game. Druid 3-0 sweeps JJ's lineup. So JJ appearing to have no outs here. And yeah, there's no way. Totem at all. And that's it. Fire, the local boy, gets through to the semi-finals of Insomnia, taking down yet another big name, Radu. Yeah, this only happened because JJ didn't play the Argos correctly on turn 4 in the zoo game. Are you going to tell him that when you see Yeah. Thought you might. Like, he's not going to be happy about him how he played himself. He's going to be very upset. And Lothar's back. What did you think, Lothar? 
Well, this match was interesting, especially the third game. I was surprised by a few plays, uh, especially that Nourish for not drawing cards. Like, this was really weird, right? Yeah, I mean, it, you should usually draw cards when you don't have cards. That's how it works. You don't ramp and hope you top deck, Yorg Saron, and then, whoa, Yorg! <laughs> well, uh, it was a prick for Yo. I'm yeah. sure Lauren does happy for his countrymen. I like to see, you know, people, local people doing well, but I also like to see the top players go through. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just like to watch to see what happens. I like all the players to do well. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that can't happen because they would be crowning a one champion. So, yeah, always good to see people making a name for themselves though. Correct. And uh, well, this is for fire. He's on fire, right? Fire is on fire. He's in top four of a major tournament. He had to go through the Swiss. Then for the group stages, and now he's already in the semi-finals, so a long way is lying um, behind him, but still two matches to go if you want to win and take the championship. Uh, for JJ, unfortunately, doesn't end the end of the road, but we have to say, for him, this is the third consecutive top 16 at Trussel the Championship. And that's a true right? self, and he's been doing this around the world in all events. He's just an absolute monster. Um, he will just go through Swiss brackets, he'll go through top players. And JJ's going to be a force for a long time to come. He thinks about the game you know, on such a good high level and he's testing with people like Radu here. Yeah, these guys are good, <laughs> they work hard at this game. Yep, uh, that's correct. Uh, anyway, this will be the second game for, day, uh, for today. So we'll be going into another quarterfinal after this break. So don't go anywhere guys, this is Trusova Championship.